WCBI News at 10 starts now. Thank you for joining us tonight. An eight-year-old boy is dead tonight after a shooting at the River Chase Galleria. This happened in Hoover, Alabama. The boy was one of four people injured after a gunfire broke out in the mall this afternoon. Now, a juvenile female and two adults, they're still in the hospital at this hour. The mall was evacuated and the scene is clear, according to Hoover PD. Uh, this afternoon at approximately 3.18 p.m., the Hoover 911 Center received multiple calls of shots fired inside the River Chase Galleria uh, near the area of the food court. Officers, detectives, and crime scene investigators are on the scene right now and are beginning uh, the process of interviewing witnesses uh, and victims and collecting uh, any physical evidence that is at the scene. Just a heartbreaking situation there. Now, at this time, police are not reporting any arrests. It's not known how many gunmen may have been involved or exactly what the motive is for that shooting. Here closer to home, a woman is shot and killed this morning in Baldwin. Tonight, police still searching for the accused gunman. 50-year-old Gary Scott McDonald is wanted in connection with that shooting. Investigators say the shooting appears to be centered around a domestic situation with a boyfriend and girlfriend relationship. Now, this is a picture of McDonald from his Facebook. It's been confirmed to poli or by police that this is McDonald. He could be driving a gold Chevy Cavalier with an Itawamba County tag, ITB 6316. If you know where McDonald is, you're asked to call 911. Now, the shooting happened around 745 on South 4th Street at Adams Auto Sales, where McDonald had been working. Baldwin police say McDonald and 26-year-old Connor Noel Kyle were living at the location. Other people there saw the shooting. Lee County Coroner Carolyn Green says that the victim died from a gunshot wound. Now, an autopsy, we're told, will be performed. Kyle's body has been sent to the state crime lab for an autopsy. Well, most of us are dry and clear weather-wise right now, but we do have a pretty hefty thunderstorm uh, coming through southern portions of Choctaw County, uh, Winston County, and Itala County. Nothing severe expected with this. Maybe some gusty winds at times, but very torrential rainfall. Uh, and you might see at the bottom of your screen right now, a flash flood warning has been issued uh, for Itala and Choctaw counties there close to French Camp. Three inches of rain has fallen in the last several hours. So that goes until 1145. Just keep in mind if you're out and about tonight and you see a flooded roadway, remember to turn around. Don't drown. I think the rest of us will remain dry tonight, 72 for the low. Tomorrow, we'll take a look at your forecast on the Emerson Animal Hospital forecast, and I'll show you. Willow is ready for the holiday. The 4th of July swim trunks are out. Pop up storms to the afternoon. Overall, not a bad 4th of July if you can dodge the storms. I've got your full first alert forecast in just a bit. Scott. All right, Trevor, thanks so much. Well, as we head into a normally busy, normally busy rather, holiday weekend, Mississippi health officials release more high COVID 19 numbers. Late today, the Mississippi State Department of Health reports 914 new cases. That's along with 11 additional deaths. So far in the state, there have been 29,684 cases since that pandemic started. Well, remember all the talk about Mississippi getting $1.25 billion in federal CARES Act money? Part of that money will now be directed to schools across the state. Courtney Ann Jackson reports. School districts will have some flexibility in terms of how they'll reopen in the fall, but most don't have flexible budgets to make big changes to how students learn. That's where the legislature is stepping in. To make sure that they're able to teach children and under this whole new concept of distance learning. The largest bucket of money is going to be used to establish a grant program for putting technology in students' hands. We felt like that we needed to help local school districts uh, with purchasing one-to-one -one devices, and that's every, you know, we want to have every student to have a, uh, some type of a laptop or a tablet device. It includes $130 million um, for, for all districts. It's going to be distributed by average daily membership. Um, every district will get the same amount per pupil uh, with that portion of the money, and then there's a $20 million portion of that that will be distributed by MDE based on need. There are also a couple of bills that address internet issues. COVID-19 magnified some of those. For a lot of districts, it was lights out, go home, and you know we'll print your packets and we'll do that. And that's all the reason. That's all they could do. And it's not you know it's not anybody's fault. It's just how can you prepare for something like this? 
um, that we haven't seen in our lifetimes. Senate Bill 3046 puts $75 million into a long term broadband plan for underserved areas, while House Bill 1788 puts $50 million into short term internet access solutions. They may have to come in closer to maybe a volunteer fire department or maybe even a school bus that has a hotspot, a mobile hotspot attached to it. But we needed to give the MDE and the school district some flexibility with the $50 million uh, to be able to plug in holes where necessary. Courtney Ann Jackson, WCBI News. Over in Alabama, the state sees its highest single day increase in COVID-19 cases. More than 1,700 cases were reported there today. Doctors and health experts in the state expressing concerns over the holiday weekend. 843 people are hospitalized with the virus in Alabama. The state health department there lists Lamar and Pickens counties in its high risk category. The risk in numbers is, or rise in numbers that is, is bringing continued debate over the use and effectiveness of masks. Our Bobby Martinez took to the streets of Columbus to find out how people feel about taking cover. They help save lives. I think it's necessary if we're going to stop the spread of the virus. Cases of COVID-19 have increased in recent weeks, according to Mississippi Department of Health. And during these spikes, state health officer Dr. Thomas Dobbs has taken to social media to voice his concerns on this pandemic. He also wants people to wear a mask in public, something Tupelo Mayor Jason Shelton made mandatory this week. Uh, here in Tupelo, uh, we did the executive order uh, to mandate wearing uh, face coverings, face masks, cloths over your face in public indoor places in the city of Tupelo. And that's Again, at the request of the North Mississippi Medical Center and the Tupelo Economic Recovery Task Force. Shelton hopes Governor Tate Reeves will soon make masks mandatory for the entire state. You know, I, I hope the governor will, will take this serious and, and be proactive. I know he doesn't like to do that, but it's, it's necessary. We've got to listen to our healthcare professionals. We've got to listen to our uh, scientists. We've got to uh, do what our healthcare professionals tell us. To prevent us from getting sick. In Columbus, wearing a face mask in public is not mandatory, but Mayor Robert Smith is encouraging people to wear them anytime they are out, something some of the folks we talk to are on board with. Please, if you're not wearing a mask, start wearing one. They, they are uncomfortable, but they help save lives. I feel like face masks are important. I actually have a face mask. I just don't have to wear it like when I'm um, by myself. But when I'm around other people, I feel like it is very important to wear a face mask. James Harris admits mask and Mississippi humidity don't mix. I mean, it helps out with keeping the germs of coronavirus down and all, but especially, but in this heat like it's right here, it makes it hard to breathe. Columbus and Starkville leaders will address the mask ordinances at their meetings on Tuesday. At this hour, President Trump is expected to make a campaign speech in South Dakota at one of the nation's most well-known monuments. But as CBS's Natalie Brand reports, the visit is drawing controversy along with the crowds. President Trump kicked off the Independence Weekend Friday night as thousands gathered for his visit to Mount Rushmore. The president previewed his trip before leaving Washington, D.C. We are looking forward to it. I'll be making a speech there. I'll be seeing a lot of people, a lot of different people. And uh, I think it'll be a fantastic evening. In South Dakota, officials said that social distancing and face coverings would not be required at the celebration, though organizers provided masks for those who wanted them. Everybody in our family has really been healthy. And so this is really the first big thing that we've done away from our, our uh, town. A retired Mount Rushmore superintendent spoke about the decision a decade ago to end fireworks shows there amid concerns of wildfires and the environment. This year, another concern is COVID-19. Nobody really knows what, um, what will happen um, after this event if people leave and contract the virus, um, expose all of the visitors and also all the employees. Native American groups also have cultural concerns and view the monument as a desecration of stolen land. CBS News has learned the president in his speech tonight is expected to take aim at efforts nationwide to remove controversial monuments and statues. Here in Washington, the president will continue to celebrate the 4th of July holiday, hosting a Salute to America event on Saturday.
The White House says frontline workers, military members, and their families will be among those watching from the South Lawn. A spokesman says facial coverings will be provided, and the Department of the Interior says more than 300,000 masks like these will be available for spectators on the National Mall. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House. Military flyovers honoring the cities of the American Revolution will begin over Boston and continue through New York, Philadelphia, and Baltimore before flying over Washington, D.C., followed by fireworks. All right, we're going to send things back over to meteorologist Trevor Burchett. Trevor, fireworks uh, popping up. We hear some at the yeah, studio tonight. Some good weather for most people, except for those poor folks in Ackerman. That storm has just been sitting right on top of them, but maybe some better luck for them tomorrow night. Here's the forecast for 4th of July. Some pop-up showers and storms around. Not a total washout, but it is going to be hot and humid. Highs in the 90s. I've got your full first alert forecast on the other side of this break. Stay with us. Your WCBI first alert AccuWeather forecast with meteorologist Trevor Burchett. Well, 4th of July weekend is officially here for most of us. I've got about 45 more minutes, but for a lot of you at home, it's already started. Maybe kicking off with some fireworks, our barbecues out there this evening. But unfortunately, some folks have been caught in the rainfall. I want to start out with what's going on out there right now. Here's a live look at radar. Most of us have dried out from what we saw earlier today, but those folks in Choctaw County, Winston County, they have been just under the gun of some very heavy rain over the last two or three hours, it seems like. Let me take you in a little bit closer to what's going on there. We have a flash flood warning that has been issued for Atala and Choctaw counties. Uh, main area of concern with this is near French Camp. They've really picked up the most rain. The good news is the rain has exited the French Camp area, but for folks down near Louisville, uh, down Highway 25 in southwestern Winston County, still some very heavy rain, winds, and lightning as these storms very slowly make their way out of the area. I mentioned French Camp for you. Here is what we're thinking. In the last 24 hours, they've received over three and a half inches of rainfall, so that could lead to some localized flash flooding in spots on the roadways. And as you can see at the bottom of your screen right now, that's going to go until 1145 again for Choctaw and, Win and uh, Winston counties. Uh, so if you're going to be out and about today uh, in the next couple of hours, keep that in mind. You might run into some flash flooding in spots out there right now in Columbus. This is a live view looking back toward that storm. And this has been pretty cool. We've seen some lightning associated with the storm. We saw a little bit right there, uh, but there have also been some folks shooting off fireworks just on the other side of the Tom Bigby waterway. Uh, so it's been cool to see Mother Nature's fireworks right there uh, combined with some human fireworks in the distance. So hopefully, though, those storms are going to start to move out of here in the next little bit. 72 for the low. I think we'll be dry here in the next hour, at least in our area, as those storms push on into Atala County. Tomorrow we wake up partly cloudy, but the storms develop once again by lunchtime. I think we'll have some pop up storms out and about that continues through three, three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock. The chance will be there for some pop up showers and storms. And then into the evening hours, I think by eight o'clock, we'll still see some storms out there. After that, though, going into fireworks time, I think we're looking pretty good. Nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, I think we're dry. Temperatures staying warm and muggy near 80 degrees after 10 o'clock. Stay with me tomorrow. I'll have the latest on where the rain is and where it is headed for your 4th of July outdoor activities. Some showers and storms for the rest of this weekend. Better rain chances 60 to 70 percent Monday through Wednesday. Drying out by the end of the week. Temperatures staying warm close to 90 degrees. Overnight lows near 70. While some cities may be going for going forth with fireworks displays this year, be prepared for some different seating arrangements. We take a look when we come back. We're watching WCBI News at 10 with Scott Martin. Welcome back, everyone. Folks are loading up their cars for food and fireworks this 4th of July, but our Stephanie Poole finds that like everything else in 2020, this year's fireworks show may be a little different. As colors light up the sky on the 4th of July, you may be watching it from your car this year. At least that's the plan the Starkville Parks and Recreation has made for citizens. Due to COVID, we're not going to have vendors, we're not going to have jumpers and full events, but we are going to have the fireworks. Mayor Lynn Brule says for safety concerns, they're using an alternative way families can still celebrate the holiday with the drive up light show. You know, people can park and, and sit in the bed of their truck or, or listen to it. Uh, we're going to have music that goes with it. It'll be synced with it. But other than that, it's just a real quick, 
enjoyment of fireworks, sort of traditional, but not uh, our normal, we'll put it that way. For families planning to use firecrackers in their backyards, visiting Orbit Fireworks is a must. Employee Candy Neighbor says the foot traffic has been nonstop since Monday. The sales have been good. Everybody's coming out. Of course, we've all been quarantined in, and everybody's ready to get out and pop some firecrackers. Enjoy the nice day we've been having. And a large crowd means mandatory prep. Getting the register set up, getting everybody set up for the sales, getting this, uh, all the stuff out so we know everybody can come in and do what they need to do and have a good time. We had a pretty good crowd every day, so that's great for our business. I'm hoping it'll stay that way. The fireworks show begins at 9 p.m. at the Starkville Sportsplex. Well, now, if you're planning to do the whole social distance thing the, this Independence Day and hosting your fireworks display at home, just remember... Safety first. Firefighters recommend that only people 18 years and older handle fireworks. Children should always be supervised and always have a hose or a bucket of water handy for any unplanned sparks. Also, never aim fireworks at anyone and resist the urge to make your own. Formally, from any structure is about 30 feet from any structure or overhang. Um, you you want to stay away from that because something can go wrong and uh, you have an exposure there that can, can ignite, even though it has been raining quite a bit here lately, uh, but there's still other things that are that can ignite uh, in that general area. Also, fun fact, Captain Rodriguez there, full of knowledge. He's awesome. Now, check your local laws, too. It's illegal to shoot fireworks within city limits in most towns here in our viewing area. Well, these Panthers have pride. The high school football tour checks in with Amory. See that preview next in sports. WCBI Sports with Courtney Robb. The high school football tour takes a slight detour into 3A ball. Next stop on the tour checks in with the Amory Panthers. Nearly all of Coach Allen Glenn's team returns for another season. The Panthers are stop number 12 on the high school football tour. WCBI Sports 2020 High School Football Tour is brought to you by. Itawamba Community College, Cannon Ford of Starkville, Monroe County Farm Bureau, Max South Broadband, and the Bank of Vernon. The Amory Panthers are ready to get after it. How could they not be? Head coach Alan Glenn returns nearly his entire team from the 2019 season, packed with plenty of Friday night experience. A lot of our skill guys back. You know, we've got to replace a few linemen, but we've got a lot of guys that's played a lot of Friday night football, and, you know, and that's and that's good. You know, we we we're excited about that. Glenn remains impressed with the upcoming senior class specifically. Over the last few seasons, Amory knew its class of 2021 has the opportunity to be the 3A team to beat. We knew when they were eighth graders, they had a chance to to be pretty good. So, uh, you know, now it's their senior year and we're excited to see them and see what happens. A lot of pressure goes to the Panthers senior quarterback Hunter Jones. Jones has had time to learn how to handle the pressure entering his fourth season at starting QB. Hunter's been really good for us. You know, he's been a 2,000 yard passer and a 300 yard rusher every year. Uh, at least for the last three years. So a lot of ex expectations are there for him. The excitement doesn't stop there. With a majority of the team coming back, Amory doesn't have to worry about learning anything new. The focus now is all about competing at the highest level. Of course, the scheme, you know, it's not changing. We're going to do what we do. Uh, so, as a coach, it, it's not, I wouldn't say easy is the word to use, but it's, it's a, I guess it makes you feel better knowing that those guys have done it for so long. Uh, but we do have to replace, you know, five offensive linemen. So, and that's, uh, in my opinion, that's where games are won is up front on both sides of the ball. However, the Panthers do have a new addition to the team. Defensive coordinator Chris Shoup joins Amory after serving as the DB's coach under Trent Hammond in Tupelo. Really excited about Coach Shoup. Uh, we've got, you could really say eight to nine starters back on defense. So we've got a good core group coming back on defense. Amory returns to action against Itawamba AHS on August 21st. We, we love football here in Amory. Uh, our town loves it. The tradition's rich. Uh, so we're just ready to get rolling. With the Panthers on the high school football tour, Courtney Robb, WCBI Sports. WCBI Sports 2020 High School Football Tour with Amory High School is brought to you by Cleveland Moffett Funeral Home of Amory, Outdoors Advantage, and Secure Alarms of Amory. 
plenty more high school football tour to go from here. Tomorrow we check in with the Mantachi Mustangs for stop number 13. And then on Sunday we check in for stop number 14 with the Bruce Trojans. Monday is stop number 15 with Calhoun City. A new era begins for Calhoun City. Stop number 16, we check in with Winona on Tuesday. Number 17, Water Valley on Wednesday. Stop number 18 checks in with the Nettleton Tigers on Thursday. Stop number 19 checks in with East Union. We'll be urging it up with them on Friday. And then stop number 20, already into the 20s, Boonville, will be Saturday, July 11th. And then finishing out that will be on stop number 21 on Hatley. That will be on sun Sunday before we get ready and head into Alabama week. For any of those stops you may have missed along the way, you can always check out our website at WCBI.com. That's it for sports. More for you when we come back after the break. All right, we had a technical glitch with tonight's lottery drawing fee, but never fear, we've got your winning Mega Millions right here tonight. Check your tickets. The numbers are 20, 45, 44, 45, and 50. Your Mega Ball number is 24, and the Mega Plier is two times, so good luck. Flash flood warning continues for Choctaw and Itala counties until 1145. Overall, 4th of July weekend not looking oh so bad. Some showers and storms out there. Better rain chances, though, coming back here through the middle and end portion of the week. I think we do start to dry out by Friday, though. Staying hot and humid for the next several days. Highs near 90, overnight lows in the low 70s. Okay, those numbers because there was a typo. I was going to say graphic. it didn't sound quite right. I know. 20, 40, 44, 45, and 50. The graphic had a typo in it. So 20, 40, 44, 45, 50. All right. Have a good weekend. We'll see you all tomorrow.